social expedience towards certain solutions that don't always um, make sense when you add up the numbers. And one you, that I quoted you on was this idea that we can have our coal and climate too if we just capture the CO2 from the carbon dioxide from a coal burning fire, fire plant and compress it and put it back in the earth where the carbon came from. Um, and th what, the question I'm asking is really about numbers. And, and you've, you've used numbers very effectively just now in the last 20 minutes to explain problems in a clear-eyed way. But we tend to gloss over numbers uh, so much. T take us through that little story about CO2 coming from coal and reveal why clean coal in a climate context may not be all it's uh, touted to be. Most happy to do so. This is a numerate audience, so calculate along with me. It's very simple, this one, right? It's very simple, okay? Um, uh, let's, let's lay the foundation first. Right now we produce about 4 billion tons of crude oil. Okay? You'll see why it'll become important in a while. 4 billion tons of crude oil worldwide. Uh, the liquid has about, well, there are crude oils which are almost like gasoline, there are crude oils which are like tar, but say it's 0.8% right? density, right? So 4 billion becomes close to 5 billion. So say we have 5 billion tons, uh, sorry, we have 5 billion cubic meters, right? We have 4 billion tons, 5 billion cubic meters of oil. We take it out of the ground. 5 billion cubic meters. I'm taking notes. Okay? Now, globally we shove in about 8 billion tons of carbon, right? Multiply by 3.7 roughly for CO2, right? You get yourself 30 billion tons of CO2. We have 30 billion tons of CO2. Now, if you want to control it by sequestration, you cannot capture 60% of it, because 60% of it is mobile or small. You cannot capture it from the high-flying planes or from my little Honda. Right. You will not capture it from my gas furnace. I have a super furnace in my basement, 97% efficient. But still, you know, these 3% will not be captured, right? Which, which right. go, I don't have a chimney. There's this tube at the side of the house goes out of it. So we are looking only at big sources, big stationary sources, big power plants, big refineries, big industrial plants. So maybe 40% of it is capturable, realistically, right? Yeah. 0 0.4 multiplied by 3. 12 billion tons of CO2 we can capture, right? Okay. Now, lots of it is in China, because that's where everything is made now. In fact, China is number one emitter right now, right? Lots of it is in India, right? So these folks are not going to start capturing it next Monday. So it's the us rich folks. You would start first. So let's say we capture half of that stuff. Half of six that. billion tons of the stationary which we can capture, right? right? So we have six billion tons of CO2, right? That's billion tons of gas, right? A gas, right? Now, Shoving it down in the ground as gas, that's kind of, you know, goes against the grain, so to speak, physically, right? <laughs> so we want to liquefy it first, really, right? Of course, we can make it as heavy as water, but that would kind of cost too much energy. So we make it only as condensed when it turns into water, right? Supercritically CO2, which is just shy of half a gram per cubic centimeter, right? So I have a half a gram per cubic centimeter. And I have 6 billion tons of CO2. So I have 12 billion cubic meters of CO2, twice the value, right? So if I want to control half of the sta stationary CO2, I have to shove every year 12 billion cubic meters of it down, which is twice, more than twice the volume of global oil industry, which took 100 years plus to create, which operates in Venezuela, Siberia, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Canada, which took some $5 trillion investment over decades to build all these pipelines, compressor stations, derrick drills. So of course we know how to do it. We know how to build a pipeline. We know how to compress the gas. You know, we know how to drill the hole and put it down the hole. We know all these things, really. But how long does it take you to create an industry shoving 12 billion cubic meters of something down, and that will be controlling what? That will be controlling 20% of the total, which means that China probably and India will make up the difference in no time, and we'll yeah. still be emitting as much as we did ever before, right? So just tell me how rapidly you can build an industry worth several trillion dollars and shoving against the gravity 12 billion cubic meters now, when it, suppose we grant all of this. Suppose, you know, a magnificent outside force shoves it down for us, costs us nothing. Well, you know, the thing which we get out, these 5 billion cubic meters of oil which we get out, somebody's willing to pay. As of last Friday, 78 barrels, uh, dollars per barrel. Somebody's willing yeah. to pay. Who is willing to pay for this? Right. If we would have to be taxed, heavily taxed for everything we buy, right? To, to put it down there, right? And then, that's not the end of the story, you know? So 12 billion cubic meters, you know, that's then paying for it. But suppose somebody even pays for it. Somebody shoves it for us and pays for it. You are the ones who want to be living next to the storage advertised, the biggest CO2 storage on planet, 5 billion cubic meters <laughs> stored right under your feet. Somebody will lift 
I have to live next door to this. You see how people are eager to live to any power plant, to any refinery, to any giant wind farm, right? So where are the takers willing to live next to one or two billion? Because it's a gas, right? And eventually it will start creaking and squeaking through the crevices and coming out, right? Gas heavier than air. So you go with your dog for a walk one day and your dog will not survive the walk, really, right? You know? <laughs> and as simple as that, really. So who will be guaranteeing so this one is that off these, the list. who will be guaranteeing that these reservoirs will never leak really? Right. So what will have to happen like this nuclear Anderson yeah. Act? Government yeah. has to step in and say, you know, we will have to pay it eventually when these reservoirs will start leaking and, you know, yeah. whatever. So the legal issues, when you forget about economic issues, when you forget about technical issues, shoving 12 billion cubic meters down the ground every yeah. year, which is one trillion cubic meters, right? In, it's it's mind-boggling, these things, right? So that whole clean coal mantra in the and climate context. And you see, this all is... could be done in whatever, right? In th that yeah. calculation itself, if I wouldn't have talked around it, the calculation itself takes five yeah. seconds, really, right? right. To compare it to that oil business, really, right? You know, so <laughs> of, course, you know, so of course it's doable. People always say, but it's doable. We know how to build pipeline and pump gas and compare. Of course we know, really, right? right? You know? But think about the volumes, really, right? You know? Doubling the global oil industry in what, right? Yeah. Right? So then, so if that's, that seems pretty clearly off the list. I, I, uh, but it boys. No, it it's not off the list because, because oil industry knows how to do it. Right. And governments are eager to show they are doing something, so it will be done. And but, the coal, you know, and by the way, yeah, the coal exactly. companies so everybody have a lot loves power, it basically right. because, you know, and it's, it's something which we can do today, right? So it will be right. done. But given the fact that we are pumping 30 billion, yeah. and what is the size of these things like, you know, in, uh, in uh, Weber, Saskatchewan, in Saleh, in, uh, in Algeria, and Sleipner in North Sea, like, you know, they are measured in millions of tons, right? You know, yeah. per year, right? Millions of tons, right? Yeah. Here we have to store, you know, many billions of tons. And forever, basically, not forever, but, you know, Precisely, when it would happen, then we would say, well, we can exhaust our coal resources, right? Because we are hiding it now, right? Yeah. So we could be then stuck with this for the next 200 years, right?